Hi friends, have you ever wondered how do wet clothes get dry when you hang them out like this? Where does the water in the clothes go? It goes into the air as water vapor. So water is changing its state from liquid to gas. You may already know that changing the state from liquid to gas is known as boiling. So is the water in these clothes boiling? Obviously not. Then what is this process known as? That's right, it's called evaporation and that will be the topic for this video. And at the end, we'll finish off with our top three questions on this topic. One example of evaporation is drying of clothes. Let's look at some other simple everyday examples of evaporation. Can you identify what is the evaporation in the pictures here? The puddles of water formed on the road after rain disappear after some time. Why? Because the water evaporates. The liquid water changes into water vapor. We know that a perfume bottle should be closed tightly because if it is left open for a long time, the perfume will disappear. Since perfume evaporates quickly, the liquid perfume changes to perfume vapors. The sweat from our body evaporates and helps to cool down our body. The water evaporates from the seas and oceans and this water vapor rises up and forms clouds and comes down later as rain or snow. So the water cycle works with the help of evaporation. Let's compare boiling and evaporation. Examples of boiling are boiling of water or boiling of milk. What is common to boiling and evaporation? That's right. In both of these, liquid state is changing to vapor state. Now what do you think are the differences here? The first difference is based on temperature. Now which one do you think needs a higher temperature? That's right, it's boiling. Boiling takes place at or above a fixed temperature known as boiling point. For example, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade. But evaporation can take place at any temperature below the boiling point. So water in the lakes, rivers, puddles, and our clothes can evaporate at any temperature below 100 degrees centigrade. The next important difference is boiling is a bulk phenomena and evaporation is a surface phenomena. Now, what do these terms mean? Here we are trying to take a look where exactly in the liquid the process is taking place. Bulk phenomena means the entire liquid is trying to boil. As you can see here, the entire water is trying to boil at the same time. So boiling is a bulk phenomena. But in evaporation, only the water molecules on the surface of the liquid are changing to vapor state. So evaporation is taking place only on the surface of the liquid. Hence evaporation is a surface phenomena. Only those particles that have enough kinetic energy, that is the energy of motion, can escape from the surface and evaporate. The next difference is based on time. Which process do you think is faster? That's correct. Boiling is a rapid process, but evaporation is a slow process. And thankfully, otherwise on a hot summer day, all the ponds and the lakes would evaporate and disappear. For example, if you boil 100 ml of water, it's probably going to change into vapor in minutes. But if you take 100 ml of water and just let it be there and evaporate, it's probably going to take hours. The last difference is evaporation causes a cooling effect, but boiling does not cause a cooling effect. We'll talk more about the cooling effect later in the video. Let's place the four differences between boiling and evaporation on our concept board. Now let's look at the factors affecting the rate of evaporation. That means how fast the evaporation is taking place. To discuss these factors, we are going to use these two identical shirts. 
taken out from the washing machine. So they are equally wet. Now let's hang one shirt in a crushed way like this. And the other shirt is in a spread out manner like this. Which shirt do you think will dry first? That's right. It's going to be the blue shirt here. Because from our experience, we know the more we spread out the clothes, the faster they dry. So increasing the surface area increases the rate of evaporation. Since liquid molecules get more area to evaporate. Now let's spread out both the shirts in the same way. But let's say we keep the red shirt out on a hot summer day. And the blue shirt is kept out on a cold winter day. Which shirt do you think will dry first? Obviously the one on a hot summer day. The higher the temperature, the higher will be the rate of evaporation. Now why is that? Because higher temperature means that the average kinetic energy of the water particles in this shirt is more than this shirt. So more number of water particles have enough kinetic energy to change into vapor state and evaporate in this shirt as compared to this one. If the two shirts are kept at the same temperature, but one where there is a lot of wind and one shirt where there is no wind, which one do you think will dry first? That's right, it's going to be the blue shirt getting more wind. Now, why is that? Because with increase in wind speed, the water vapor will move away with the wind. So that decreases the amount of water vapor in the surroundings for this shirt. And so the rate of evaporation increases. You might have done this before where we put clothes under the fan for them to dry faster. Now if the two shirts are kept at the same temperature, but one in a place where the humidity is low and the other in a place where the humidity is high. First, let's understand the meaning of humidity. Humidity means the amount of water vapor present in the air. At a particular temperature, the air can hold only a certain amount of water vapor. So which one do you think will dry first? That's right, it's the one where the humidity is low. Because where the humidity is high like this one, the air doesn't want more water vapor from your shirt. So lesser the humidity, the rate of evaporation is going to be higher. Let's place the four factors affecting the rate of evaporation on our concept board. Now let's talk more about this point, evaporation causes cooling. I'm sure you've experienced cooling due to evaporation. Can you give me some examples? When you go to the doctor for vaccination, the doctor cleans your hand by putting spirit. Doesn't your hand feel cool? Now why is that? Because the spirit quickly evaporates from your hand and makes it feel cool. Another example is when you're running or you're exercising, our body naturally sweats. The water droplets evaporate from our body and helps cool it down. So sweating is our body's natural mechanism to make us feel cooler. Now let's analyze why evaporation causes cooling. During evaporation, the liquid is changing into a gas. For example, the sweat water droplets change into water vapor. To do this, they need to absorb energy from the surroundings. And the surroundings is our body in this case. The heat energy needed for the state change from liquid to gas is known as latent heat of vaporization. So during evaporation, heat energy is absorbed from the surroundings, giving rise to a cooling effect. I hope the concept of evaporation is clear to you now. I would encourage you to look around in your everyday lives and see what examples of evaporation you can find. Do let me know what you found by putting it in the comments below. And do remember to like, comment and share out this video and go hit the subscribe button for my channel right now. And also follow my Facebook page.
and do check out my website manochaacademy.com. I'll put the links below. To revise the concepts, do try the quiz and the top three questions on this topic. Links are given below the video. Thanks for watching.